some water. And our trade was so prosperous this year that we sold all of our goods and met all of our needs. I don't have anything to worry about for the rest of the season. Are you I haven't boasting seen a season about like your this. goods again? Well, my old friend, I'm surprised to see you traveling this route, but it's good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true that this route is the longer way back to our home, but it keeps us away from the Mongols. Come, let's have a cup of tea together. down there. Heroes of Mongolia, we finally caught up with our quarry. They will taste our arrow steam. Ready the archers! red with their blood and show mercy to no one kill them all <laughs> God, the Mongols are coming! Sound the alarm! Tell everyone to man the walls and bar the gates! The Mongols are attacking us! Anything else of value you can find, and burn the rest down to the ground! Mercy, please! Burn it! Burn it, my soldiers! Nothing will remain! Now let's ride! <laughs> May you bear the name of the Prophet, my son. Be called Jalaluddin so that your existence will be a witness to the glory of the Holy Book, and the unknown will be known to you. And with this knowledge, you will find your sheltering harbor. The Sultan of Scholars, Bahadim Veled, may your son lead a beautiful life, and may the Lord accept your prayers for your son. And may the name of Jalaluddin be always known to all the peoples and to the nations of the earth.
I must report terrible news, O mighty Sultan. The Mongols are advancing fast. They can't be stopped. The cities in the north have been burned down, and the caravans are not able to travel you safely. You tire me with news of the Mongols. What other news can you tell your Sultan? What news of that teacher? Oh, my Sultan, Bahadun's reputation has spread throughout Khorasan. People are saying that as long as Bahadun, the Sultan of Scholars, exists, no one will listen to the Sultan of Balk. Whenever he is approached, he talks about nothing but the afterlife. He claims to have no interest whatsoever in worldly affairs, but his power is so great that it may threaten your throne someday soon. Enough of this! What is this man doing? I can't tell if he's a loyal subject or an enemy. If he seeks the love of God, why does he gather influential people around him? The great Sultan knows best, of course. But one day the legions of people around Bahadun could constitute a threat against your sovereign rule. You are absolutely right. No Sultan can tolerate anyone more powerful than himself. Sheikh Bahadun is as innocent as the sun, nevertheless. How could I be certain that one day those around him won't threaten my sovereignty by taking up arms against me? Hmm. Invite him here. There is but one way to address this. We must look him in the eye and hear what he has to say. May the Lord bestow blessings upon you, Excellency. May the Lord bestow blessings upon you too, Sheikh. We feel enormously honored that you have chosen to visit our home. Your Excellency, I am but a weak and poor person. Neither my existence upon this earth nor my absence from it will make any difference to anyone. It is your humility that makes you describe yourself in such humble terms. The truth is, you're not a weak person at all. You're the Sultan of Hearts, and I suspect that even now you're planning to replace me as the real Sultan of Balk. <sighs> That's not true, Your Excellence. I do not have any interest in gaining sovereignty over towns, cities, and countries. I want only to win people's hearts and be remembered by everyone as a good person. When my journey of life ends, I will have left behind a legacy of good deeds in my name. That is all I want. But you have become surrounded by loyal admirers. Some people are now saying, you are the true Sultan of Balk. Two Sultans can't fit into one country, so one must give up his crown and go elsewhere. You surely know the burden of being Sultan better than anyone. The responsibility can crush a man. We are dervishes. We think of other things. The world of the Sultan does not concern us. We find it to be brief and ephemeral. You must stay here while I can come and go as I please, free of your crown, your soldiers, and your palace. I want the Sultanate of Hearts, not the Sultanate of Cities. But so His Excellence will have peace of mind, I will leave the city. Hmm. Hmm.
But it's the place of your birth, sir. And you've chosen to leave it far behind you. But my heart remains with me, and that is my true home, my friend. And what about all your friends and neighbors? Aren't you leaving all of them behind, too? The messenger of God did the same thing when it was his time to go forth in the world. No matter who we love and who we become attached to, it always ends in separation. But you're leaving the only life you've known. What's going to happen to us on this journey? All of life is a journey. Everything we see is unfamiliar. Worldly possessions will fade away eventually. Sultans die, and their cities are taken over by other sultans seeking power. Even the writing on a piece of paper lives longer than humans. You see, this world of ours is a temporary one. So let's begin. And so their journey began. The convoy that set off from Balk left mountains, plains, valleys, and towns behind them. I don't believe my eyes. It is the huge ocean that flows behind a river. Oh, scholar of Khorasan. Yes, Dervish. What is it that you seek of me, my friend? Just to give you good tidings, O oh teacher. It is my solemn prayer that your son may one day fulfill his destiny and kindle many hearts with the knowledge of love, knowledge that was brought to us by the messenger of God. Hmm. May the Lord's blessings be upon you, Dervish. But tell me, why do you say this? Because of the path he walks, the light he leaves, and because of the wind that blows whenever he passes through the world of man. I would like to give your son a present. Please accept this humble gift. Ah. The Book of Mysteries. Then you must be the venerable Dini Atar who has meant so much to our people. I am merely one who has completed his error. Now the Venerable One is your son. The Almighty God will illuminate the coming generations with his pen and with his heart. My boy, may the good Lord bless your life, your destination, and even your death. May the Lord be with you.
help us. They've broken through the gate. Here come the Mongols. Kill them all. Defend our city. Your Excellence, we've broken through the gates. <laughs> and now, let the reserve troops join the attack. Besiege Nishapur from all sides and finish it quickly. Tonight we will sleep at the Karas of Shah's palace, and then I will destroy all of the country of Karas. At once, sir. The Sultanate is indeed brief and ephemeral. Its responsibility can crush a man. Every step he takes is a blessed one. Their arrival is relief to hearts wherever they go. Mountains, deserts, and towns are now left behind. They headed towards Konya at the invitation of Seljuk Sultan Kekubat whose people had suffered through a recession of seven years. So strange there's nobody in the city. Where have they all gone? It seems that the Turks have left the city as quickly as they once occupied it. Huh? Hey! You there! Stop! Hold on a moment! Hey! Please stop! Over here! Whoa! Stop! Get out of the middle of the road, priest. What's wrong with you? I just want to know what you're doing here, my son. There are no Muslims left in the city. Or perhaps the Byzantine Emperor reacquired Konya and didn't tell us about it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you mean you don't know what's happened, my friend? Huh? Well, I'll let you in on the news. A new sultan is coming to this city today. The people have all set out to welcome him. Hmm. If that's the case, sir, then can you tell me what has happened to Sultan Kekubat? Huh. Kekubat is out with the welcoming party. Ha! <laughs> you Turks are certainly a strange people. Well, be off with you now. Far be it for me to delay you from welcoming your new sultan. Yeah! Giddy up! Thank you. 
Oh, most venerable scholar, welcome to my country. You brought light to my land. You and your family are most welcome to Konya. An abundance of thanks be to the Lord that he has saved me from a sultan who considered me a threat to his throne and brought me to a country with a wise and fair sultan. God bless you. Mm. Your Excellence. <laughs> mm. This is my son, Jalaluddin. He's become of utmost help to me during my old age. That's why I left my country. The Lord has guided us to your fair city. And how happy I am that God has chosen to bless my poor country with your wise and wonderful presence. Please consider my palace your new home for as long as you may wish. Palaces are for sultans like you. My son and I are most comfortable at madrasas. Then you are welcome to stay at Alton Abba Madrasa. Let my subjects be enlightened with knowledge from you, and let me be your first student. May the Lord bless us with honor thanks to your presence. O oh, venerable scholar, welcome to our city. Please, this way. What a strange and ironic twist of fate has led me to this place after so many years, my dear. <sighs> after we left Balk, we traveled to a number of countries. We lost our father and settled here in this city. And now I feel a burning desire to travel again. I long for those dusty roads, the sand swept around by the wind, and the narrow mountain passes that I once traveled with my father. My darling, we are destined to travel upon those same roads. But please, try and be patient. We have found safety in this city. Someone who will extinguish this burning fire in you will surely reveal himself soon. Gevher, no matter how often I am surrounded by people, I always feel lonely. The tumult inside me suppresses the noise of the crowds. There is an unusual emptiness inside me. I believe that what you have just told me are true words of wisdom, my darling. Someone is going to appear in my life who can answer all of my many questions. May God bless you with prosperity. Ah, there he is. Thank you. Thank you. He there he is. Is. Made to come here. The Lord be your heart. The venerable scholar of our city is visiting us. May the Lord bless your trade and may you be prosperous. Here he is at last, the renowned and beloved scholar. May the Lord bless you with all his goodness. What is it you are seeking? You must first know what you are seeking. Tell me, who is greater, O oh venerable scholar? The prophet or the saint Bayezid? What kind of question is that? Of course, our prophet is much greater. Is that so? Then why did Bayezid say that nothing resided in him but God, while the prophet sought forgiveness from God 70 times a day and professed that he did not have true knowledge of him? The messenger of God covers 70 ranks every single day and asks for forgiveness due to the knowledge he achieves at every rank he reaches. But Bayezid becomes excited when he achieves only one rank and therefore becomes preoccupied with that rank. 
The saint has the false impression that he is at the final rank anyone can achieve, when in fact there is no boundary to the knowledge of God. That is why the prophet is much greater than the saint. Oh. My God. What is it you are seeking? You must first know what you are seeking. What's wrong with him? Oh, look at him come. He's troubling us. Hear me. A man is worthless when he does not ask questions. Why on earth does an unloving heart exist? Even insects will refuse to eat the man who died with no love. The universe was not created from rocks and dirt, but from love. Humans were not created from flesh and blood, but from love. Who owns all these words? Who? Mongols. They are like a raging flood that destroys all of our fields. They are more horrible than a plague and more violent than an earthquake. They leave everything that they touch drenched in blood and scorched with fire. Your Excellency, the Mongols have entered the Seljuk state and are advancing quickly. They have proven to be most unstoppable. Dear God, Protect my people and my country from the invasion of these brutal monsters. <sighs> it is time to prepare for battle. We must protect our people's lives and their possessions. If necessary, we are ready to sacrifice ourselves to this end. As you Everything wish, will be made ready immediately, Your Excellency. Your father has been quiet for yes, days. Yes, Mother, I've noticed that. I'm worried about him, too. Do you think he's angry with us? No, son. Your father has fallen in love with God. All he wants is to become closer to Him. I have good news. I've found a trace of the dervish father has been seeking for so long. Oh, my son! I am so pleased to hear this news. Your father will be so happy when you tell him. Father? Huh? Father, I have news about the dervish you've been looking for. It seems he's staying at the Shikarji Inn. <sighs> Son, I need you to take me to this man. Take me to him immediately. Venerable scholar of Konya, welcome, welcome, welcome! Wait, is he here? Uh, I'm afraid I don't know who you're talking about, sir. I'm looking for a dervish. He wears a black robe, and he is capable of knowing absolutely everything about you with just a single look. Hmm. I think the man you're looking for is the man from Tabriz. They call him Tabrizi Shems Parende. He's a strange man. Sounds like the man we're looking for. Is he here now? Oh, yes, sir. He's here. He stays in his room all day long. He's always in deep contemplation. Could you point out his room to us, sir? Why, of course, sir. Right over there. He's in that room.
I always knew that one day you would succeed in finding me, O Sultan of Hearts, for there are answers you still seek. Shams, I implore you, you must open every secret door to me. You have many questions, but are you strong enough for the answers? My heart is strong enough. But it is your mind that you rely upon so much. I can free myself of my thoughts if I need to. Your love of God has made you almost drunk. I felt dizzy for so many days. Every moment my heart longs for such drunkenness. You must die before death comes for you. I cannot live anymore if I must carry this agony inside of me. But what about your crowds of followers? whom you enlighten like a candle in the dark. If necessary, I would eradicate my existence. But you're a scholar, you own a rank, and you are a man of respect and prestige. <laughs> Though we both know those things don't matter. Then get up and join me. The journey is long and time is short. <laughs> when one embarks on a journey to an unknown place, it's wise to ask directions of one who has been there before. Mm. And you shall ask them of me, so that all of my secrets will become known to you. Then let us begin. I don't know what's going on. He's banished from wherever he goes. The Shems is like a magician. No one knows anything about the origin of the Shems. What does he do? I think this man should be banished from Konya. Father, the people of Konya are constantly worrying about they you. They saw him every single day for years, so his absence now is unsettling for them. But they're right! Our father has been isolated for longer than he ever has before! Since his arrival, this dervish from Tabriz has deteriorated father's mind! We should be patient. The Almighty has always responded to your father's entreaties with generous blessings. This dervish is not right. Dervish, so I don't like the what way he's taking Tell him that just man is a devil. Huh? No! <gasps> There he is, the man from Tibriz, who has deteriorated Mevlana's mind. Our teaching has been disrupted because of you! We won't be able to see Mevlana unless that dervish leaves him alone. We have to drive this man out of this city. Who will help me rid us of this menace? These are difficult times. The enemy is so brutal, they burn cities to the ground. Our neighbors are brutally slaughtered. Tyranny runs rampant everywhere we look. But do not forget that oneself is more powerful than one's enemy. Indeed, oneself is the greatest enemy. The Mongol cavalry goes back to where they came from after an attack, but where can we take ourself to? How do we save ourselves from the evil commanding self? Venerable sir, why does God create us with such an enemy contained within us? One must first clean the board before beginning to write upon it. To understand the value of comfort, we must first bear the burden of it. Paradise is surrounded with burden and troubles, while hell is surrounded with joy. Man cannot understand what's good for him. We cannot foresee the blessings of the Lord that will follow these troublesome days, for that is His way. O oh, great Sultan of Hearts, our hearts and lives are always with you, but lately we are deprived of our lessons due to this horrific trouble with the Mongols. What you are doing is for the sake of the Lord too. You are striving for people's safety. You will receive your share of every prayer made in peace and tranquility. <sighs> 
Many scholars have prospered in Muslim lands in the past. Could you please tell us about their teachings? Enough! What? Don't you dare tell them about what other teachers have said. When will you start talking about what you have to say? When will you say, God has whispered to my heart? Oh, no, no, Dervish, who does he think he is? Mm -hmm. Talking to us that way. Dervish. Teacher, why do you permit this man to act with such audacity? We really don't understand this. This man confuses us, and he makes no attempt to understand us. A man can only see himself in the mirror of his friend. Seeing oneself in the other is called friendship. Our dear prophet once said, A believer is a mirror for the believer. Haven't you ever heard the story about the Roman and the Chinese artists? Roman and Chinese embroiderers once made a bet in front of a sultan. They both praised their own talents and skills, claiming that no one else can match them in excellence. Go on, tell me of your skill. Your Excellence, we greet you with the highest regards. The dexterity of our fingers is sufficient to make the best embroidery. The entire world recognizes us as the unparalleled masters. Now it's your turn. Your Excellence, our dexterity is so great that we are able to turn stone into a masterpiece and a piece of marble into a flower. Then you will both begin drawing on two walls facing one another. We will see who is telling the truth. Yes, mm. Your Highness. The Chinese artists asked for various types of paints, brushes, and chemicals, while the Roman artists asked only for polish. You requested some paints and brushes? Well, here they are. So while the Chinese embroiderers were making the most beautiful embroidery, The Roman ones were polishing and shining the walls. <clears throat> the time was up. They announced that they'd finished their work. The Sultan came to view the drawings. He first looked at the drawing of the Chinese artists. Their wonderful embroidery impressed him. Oh. Mm. You did not lie when you described your talent. Your drawing is exquisite. Thank you, sir. And now it is the Romans' turn to impress me. As you command, sir, we hope our creation will please you. Your creation is an extraordinary and magnificent work. The Roman artists in this story represent those who purified their hearts from evil feelings and thoughts. A purified heart always shines. A friend is a mirror for the friend. Shems is the mirror in whose person I see myself and the universe. Shems is the embroiderer of my heart. Do not upset him and do not hurt him. Shems? Where are you? Shems! Shems, where are you, my dear friend? Where are you, Shems? What happened?
happened, darling? Why are you shouting? Please, tell father. me what happened. Are you all right? What happened, father? It's Shems. Shems is gone. I can't find him anywhere. But where can he be, father? Where on earth do you think Shems may have gone to? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know where he could have gone. Shems had disappeared and left the Sultan of Hearts in loneliness. All doors were closed again. Flowers faded and withered up. Birds ceased their songs and flew away. Days turned into months. It's been ages, dear, and you're still grumbling the name of Shams in your dreams. You're not just upsetting yourself. You're spreading your misery to your entire family and to all of Konya. Alas, the sun has long since been extinguished and I am left all alone in the darkness of the unknown. You really surprise me here, Father. While our people are in need of your light, you're saying that you're left in darkness. It's such a shame. People are unaware of the truth. They've closed their windows to the sun and now try to light a candle instead. We were afraid that he had poisoned you, but his words were indeed a remedy and a light to your heart, but now there are other things to consider. That's right, Father. All the people of Konya are worried about you. They grieve for you. So I have decided to help you by finding this man for you. Go, my son. Go and find him for me. Give him my greetings and give him my regards, but bring him back to me. Tell him that it's not time to leave yet and that I am left in darkness here. Promise me this. All right, Father. O oh, Crier, let my call be heard everywhere. Let it echo through the mountains. Where are you, Shems? Has anybody seen a dervish who has left those who miss him still? Those who want and need him in their lives? Please come back. Your departure has left me empty. My only peace and tranquility has gone with your departure. Return from that long journey. Please come back. Extinguish the fire burning inside me due to the longing. I am looking for a wise man called Shems. It is extremely important that I find him. Please help me, sir. I don't know the man. Uh, I think I've seen a man who matches your description over there in that mosque. You have helped me more than you know, my friend. The blessings of God be upon you. And upon you as well. Scholar, Shems, at last I found you. My search has finally borne fruit. Who sent you over here? Those people who didn't want me there? A drop which doesn't reach the sea evaporates in the earth and disappears. The moon won't lose anything with dogs howling. The worldly people do not understand the state of saints at all. They are completely unaware of heavenly wisdom. My father's left in darkness because of you, Shems. He wants you to return. We need his light. Don't reject him, please. For you. <sighs> the condition for friendship is to sacrifice oneself for the friend and even die for him.
Good news, sir. Shems is coming back. Your son and Shems have just entered the city. Sprinkle water on the streets so that he can feel relieved. Scatter roses over the streets. Spread the news. Let the clouds clear from the moon. Let the daylight disperse the fog. Spread the news. His exuberance fills the universe. Shems has returned. Everything is back to the beginning. Yeah, he's it right. Is. It is. What knowledge does this dervish possess to make him so precious? I was just wondering the exact same thing. The son of our heart, your return is such a blessing to us. Many mysteries that we must answer. There is much that is unknown. I've returned to this place for myself. The wound that's not opened won't recover. My friend, what a burning closeness it is indeed. To live is nothing but to dwell in a desolate desert. What's desolate is the life itself. Where are our fathers and mothers whose loins we are? How close are our children who are a part of us, even our wives with whom we share our lives? True, except for the few hearts which we explain ourselves to and which we are able to understand. To whom does this world belong? To a German? To a Roman? To a Phoenician? Or perhaps a Mongol? What are we expected to do in this mortal world? We have but a little bit of time to understand the truth of existence. That's all. The material world is but the place of questioning, while the truth is the place where we can actually see the beauty. Those who consider the world as the place for buying and selling can't understand this. They can only keep breathing. They do not question. That's true, of course. But to be a friend is to reside in the soul of the other person. have to put an end to this mockery. It's time to get rid of this man who burdens our teacher. I know what to do with him. Trust me. This time I will leave here without anybody knowing about it. To be certain, nobody will ever find me again. Shems! Shems! Shems, where are you? You have left us again. How could this be, my friend? You have left us in loneliness. Shems, please! Shems! True friends never die. They don't die in contempt. The Lord blesses them with his mercy. Lovers do not die like that, Shems.
Good God! Show mercy to no one! This news is not pleasant at all. Our towns are being taken over one by one by the Mongols. Your Excellence, we still have a strong army. I am confident that we can repel them. Ah, uh, Sultan Keikubat. He's lucky that he didn't see these days. Excellence, word has arrived that the Mongols are advancing towards Konya and will be here soon. What do you think, Vizier Pavane? Give us your opinion. Speak from your heart. Your Excellence, in my opinion, we should be more clever with the Mongols instead of facing them in battle. You are right, Vizier. Their army is too great for us. Our people are in such great fear that they are asking Mevlana for prayers. O oh Lord, protect Konya and all the Muslim world from the wrath of the Mongols. Keep those you love amongst us. Amen. Amen. Your Highness, huh? look at the main gate. It's opening up for you! Kill that man at once! Release the arrows! It's unbelievable! Oh, arrows are None of the arrows hit the target! I can't believe my eyes! Who is this man? Oh Lord, you are the all-powerful. Who is he? Tell me! Who is that man? Tell me his name right now! Come on, move! Come on, be quick! Come on! Tell me, who is that man? Do you know him? I do. He is Mevlana, the venerable scholar of Konya. He is Mevlana, the Sultan of Hearts. Hmm. It seems the rumors are true. He truly is blessed. This city cannot be destroyed, but I have taken a vow to destroy it. So fulfill my promise by destroying only one of the walls of the city. As Say you to wish it. Your and do not plunder his city! Let them destroy the wall. Konya will not fall. There are other towers that protect our city, and we will be spared from the brutality of the invaders, both now and in the future. Lord, bless this city from tyrants forever. We thank you for your mercy. What happened to you? You used to be fearless, but now I can see that you were so frightened in front of those bloodthirsty invaders. Yeah. 
Yes. Welcome, Husabetin. Please come in. I have a humble request for you, teacher. Please sit down and tell me what it is, Husabetin. Your students would like you to make your teachings permanent by writing down your lessons and collecting them into a book for future uh, generations. Uh, I have already begun to do exactly that. I was recently inspired to begin this collection that you've requested. Here is my first effort. God willing, I will write others. If you are prepared to record these words, I shall commence my recitation. Listen now to this reed, how it makes a complaint, telling a tale of separation. Ever since I was cut off from my reed bed, men and women have all lamented my bewailing. These are wonderful words, teacher. I want a breast torn asunder by severance, that I may fully declare the agony of yearning, everyone who is sundered. My secret indeed is not remote from my lament, but eye and ear lack the light to perceive it. Body is not veiled from soul, nor soul from the body, yet to many is leave given to see the soul. This cry of the reed is fire, it is not wind. Whoever possesses not this fire, let him be nothing. I have never heard such beautiful wisdom in my entire life. It's the fire of love that's fallen into the reed. Greetings. Greetings, O oh, revered one. Teacher, I have noticed that you are held in high regard even by those from other religions. Can you tell me what is the wisdom of that? Every human being deserves to receive respect and to give it to others, for it is God who will make his judgment about people's beliefs, not other men. Welcome, O most venerable scholar of Konya. You honor us. Blessings to you. What is this noise saying? What is it that this noise cries out? Huh? Hmm? Can't you hear the anvil and the hammer are praising the Lord? Whatever is in the heaven and on earth, both declare the praises and glory of God. Haven't you ever heard this voice? I don't hear the hammer saying anything but praises to the Lord. Greetings upon those who will be coming after us. May the Lord be our witness that these teachings of love and understanding will reach everywhere that the sun shines upon. All humanity will be filled with joy thanks to these words of compassion and love. O oh people, do not fall into separation and never think of separation. Praise fidelity and be loyal to each other. Every spot my feet touch is a place to worship the Lord. He is the only one to be praised and worshiped in the whole world. Rose, nightingale, heavens, lovers are all pretexts. The genuine purpose is Him, God Almighty.